an interstellar object whirling through our solar system is actually a nuclear-powered spacecraft. The interstellar visitor, 3i Atlas. 3i Atlas. 3i Atlas. 3i Atlas. Since the discovery of 3i Atlas, the internet has been flooded with wild claims that it's not a comet at all, but an alien spacecraft, a secret probe, or evidence of intelligent life crossing the stars. Its incredible speed, unusual orbit, and mysterious glow have only fueled the speculation, blurring the line between science and science fiction. So what is it really? An artifact of intelligence or a relic of cosmic history? The truth, as it turns out, is every bit as fascinating as the mystery itself. When astronomer Daryl Seligman and his team first spotted the faint speck of light on July 1 using the ATLAS telescope, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, they had little idea that it would turn out to be only the third interstellar object ever observed. The telescope, designed to detect potentially hazardous asteroids, routinely scans the sky every night for anything that moves. But this object moved too fast. Follow-up observations from the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope and the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope confirmed what the team suspected. The object's trajectory was hyperbolic, meaning it was not bound by the sun's gravity. This was an object just passing through. The speed alone was staggering, 58 kilometers per second relative to the sun, more than double that of the previous interstellar visitor, Borisov, and far exceeding the sun's escape velocity. This was the fastest object of its kind ever seen. With a hyperbolic excess velocity so high, there was no mistaking its origin. Whatever 3i Atlas was, it wasn't from around here. Its orbital inclination was 175 degrees, almost aligned with the plane of the solar system, just five degrees off the ecliptic. Statistically, that's an odd coincidence. Out of all possible angles of entry, it happened to skim the same plane in which Earth and the other planets orbit. Some took that as evidence of something unusual, perhaps even deliberate. Most astronomers, though, saw it as just that, a coincidence. Size estimates soon followed. While the first interstellar object, Oumuamua, was about 400 meters long and famously cigar-shaped, and the second, Borisov, was roughly a kilometer across, 3i Atlas was enormous by comparison. Based on its brightness and reflectivity, astronomers concluded it was between 5 and 10 kilometers wide. It was also much more spherical than its predecessors. Where Oumuamua's light curve fluctuated wildly as it tumbled through space, Atlas's brightness remained stable, indicating a more uniform shape. Its consistency suggested a dense, solid body, not a fragile aggregate of ice and dust. As soon as the discovery was announced, telescopes across the planet and in orbit turned to observe it. The 10.4-meter Gran Telescopio Canarius in the Canary Islands found it to be unusually red, more similar to D-type asteroids than to typical comets. D-type asteroids are thought to originate in the outer solar system, rich in carbon and organic materials. Researchers measured its rotation period at about 16.8 hours, consistent with many small solar system bodies. Chemically, it resembled objects found beyond the asteroid belt, but not quite as far out as the Kuiper belt, hinting that its home system might have similar compositional gradients to our own. Soon after, astronomers discovered that they had already captured it without knowing it. Archival data from the Vera Rubin Observatory, then in its testing phase, contained dozens of images of the comet streaking through its field of view. 37 separate exposures revealed its position weeks before its official discovery. Likewise, NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Satellite Survey Satellite, designed to search for exoplanets, had unwittingly observed the comet for nearly a month. Those early images showed it already displaying faint cometary activity as early as May, when it was still about six astronomical units from the Sun. Ground-based and space-based telescopes alike joined the effort to characterize this interstellar visitor. Observations poured in from the Canada-France-Hawaii Telescope, the Very Large Telescope, the Palomar 200, Apache Point, Gemini South, NASA's Infrared Telescope Facility, and more. 
early analyses from Gemini South revealed a surface similar in reflectivity to Phobos, the dark, carbon-rich moon of Mars. The team noted its spectral similarity to the Tagish Rake meteorite, a rare fragment that fell in Canada in 2000, thought to represent some of the oldest, most primitive material in the solar system. This was the first hint that 3i Atlas might share its chemistry with some of the earliest building blocks of planets. Then the Hubble Space Telescope joined in. In August 2025, Hubble captured detailed images of the comet when it was still 3.8 astronomical units from its closest approach to the Sun. The images showed a faint coma, a thin atmosphere of vaporized material surrounding the nucleus, which was losing between 12 and 120 kilograms of mass per second. Most intriguingly, Hubble detected an anti-tail, a feature where the comet's dust appeared to point toward the Sun instead of away from it. Normally, solar radiation pressure pushes a comet's tail outward, forming the classic glowing streak we see in the sky. The anti-tail suggested something more complex, a balance between sublimating gas and solar radiation, perhaps caused by the comet's geometry or by differences in how sunlight was heating its surface. If Hubble gave us the shape and motion, the James Webb Space Telescope gave us the chemistry. In late August, Webb detected an astonishing ratio of carbon dioxide to water vapor 7.6 to 1, the highest ever measured in any comet. This meant that 3i Atlas's nucleus was rich in carbon dioxide ice, far more than comets born in our solar system. The discovery hinted at a profound difference in the way this object formed. In our own solar system, the water-frost line lies around the middle of the asteroid belt. Beyond that distance, water ice can survive. The carbon dioxide frost line, however, lies much farther out, where even CO2 can remain frozen. The abundance of CO2 in 3i Atlas implies it formed beyond that line, perhaps in the outer reaches of its own star system. In essence, it's a frozen relic from a world where even carbon dioxide never vaporized. Further observations revealed even more strangeness. Using the Very Large Telescope, researchers detected nickel in the comet's coma, but no iron, an odd imbalance since these elements usually appear together. They also found cyanide compounds, the same kind that once sparked public panic when astronomers detected them in Halley's Comet in 1910. The nickel, scientists believe, is bound to organic molecules on the comet's surface, released when those molecules break apart in sunlight. This shows that even far from the Sun, the comet's chemistry is dynamic, with complex reactions transforming ancient material into new compounds. By early September, Gemini South captured the first clear image of 3i Atlas's tail, still faint but visible. Around this time, a coronal mass ejection from the Sun may have briefly struck it, though the comet seemed unaffected. From its orbit, astronomers could calculate its origin within the Milky Way. A study led by Matthew Hopkins suggested that the comet came from the galaxy's thick disk, a region composed of older, metal-poor stars, and could be between 7 and 11 billion years old. If true, that makes it the oldest natural object ever observed within the solar system, predating the Sun by billions of years. Its low metallicity matched its chemistry, high carbon dioxide, low water, and few metals, just what one would expect from a primordial system that formed before many heavy elements existed. Astronomers also reconstructed its journey through space. Over the past 10 million years, 3i Atlas had passed within a fraction of a light year of nearly 100 other stars, yet none of those encounters changed its course significantly. Its velocity had barely altered, a cosmic marathon are crossing the galaxy for eons untouched by time or gravity. As it approached the inner solar system, 3i Atlas made a series of close flybys, first Mars on October 3rd, then Venus on November 3rd, Earth on December 19th, and finally Jupiter in March 2026. Each pass gave astronomers a chance to capture rare perspectives. Mars, in particular, provided a front row seat. Although a U.S. government shutdown temporarily halted communications with NASA's science teams, the Perseverance rover still managed to collect a set of 30-second exposures showing the faint motion of the comet across the Martian sky.
The European Space Agency's ExoMars and Mars Express spacecraft followed suit, stacking short exposures to reveal the ghostly trace of the comet's tail as it drifted past, an impressive feat given that these probes were never designed for deep space comet photography. For now, 3 High Atlas has slipped behind the Sun from Earth's point of view, temporarily hidden from our instruments. But in early November, it will reappear, and ESA's JUICE spacecraft, currently en route to Jupiter, will be in a perfect position to observe it. In fact, models predict that JUICE may even pass through the comet's tail. Though the spacecraft isn't equipped to directly sample the material, it might detect subtle changes in its instruments as it flies through the faint trail of dust and gas, a literal brush with another star system. The excitement around interstellar objects like 3 i Atlas has inspired new mission concepts. The European Space Agency's upcoming Comet Interceptor, launching in 2029, is designed to wait in space for the next interstellar visitor. Once a target is identified, it will fire its thrusters, intercept the object, and perform a close flyby, capturing high-resolution data that no telescope could match. In the United States, scientists at the Southwest Research Institute, led by Alan Stern, the principal investigator of the New Horizons mission, are developing a similar concept called the Interstellar Probe. If such a mission had already been in space, it could have intercepted 3i Atlas directly, giving humanity its first up-close look at an alien worldlet. Of course, no cosmic discovery today is complete without speculation about extraterrestrial technology. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, known for his provocative claims about Oumuamua, has argued that 3i Atlas could also be artificial. In his analysis, he identified nine anomalies, from its size to its orbit, that might point to an intelligent origin, giving it what he called a 30 to 40 percent chance of being an alien spacecraft. Most scientists, however, remain unconvinced. As others have pointed out, none of the comet's characteristics, its trajectory, composition, or reflectivity, require an artificial explanation. A truly artificial object, they note, would show unmistakable signs, controlled acceleration, metallic spectra, geometric structure, or perhaps radio emissions. 3i Atlas shows none of these. It behaves exactly as a natural comet should. Still, the speculation reflects our fascination with the unknown. Interstellar objects blur the line between the familiar and the foreign. They are emissaries from distant suns, carrying the chemistry of alien worlds frozen in ice and rock. Whether natural or not, each one expands our understanding of how planetary systems form and evolve. As 3i Atlas continues its passage through the solar system, astronomers are racing to learn everything they can before it vanishes back into the darkness. In a few months, it will re-emerge from behind the sun, visible again to telescopes and perhaps brighter than before. Then, gradually, it will fade, first from view, then from memory, returning to the interstellar depths from which it came. In just over a quarter century, humanity has gone from knowing nothing about interstellar visitors to observing three of them in remarkable detail. Thanks to powerful new instruments like the Vera Wubin Observatory, scientists expect to find dozens more each year. Each discovery brings new questions. How common are such objects? What do they reveal about the formation of other planetary systems? Could they carry the building blocks of life from one star to another? The universe, it seems, is sending us care packages, tiny messengers of dust and ice carrying the history of alien worlds. All we need to do is be ready to catch them, to study them, and to listen to what they tell us. In these frozen fragments, drifting silently between stars, lies a story billions of years old. A story not just of where we come from, but of how connected we truly are to the cosmos that surrounds us. The best, as always, is yet to come.